everybody's going to be happy when we get over there. Not one, not two, but everybody's going to be happy when we get over there. Amen? If we don't get excited about that, then I'm telling you, something's wrong with our salvation. If we don't get excited, amen, about being over there and seeing the face of our Savior, then something's wrong with us. Amen? We're lacking Amen. And I just want you to know tonight that I'm going to preach on the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Amen. And when He comes, we're going to be happy over there. Everybody will be. Amen. Thank God tonight. We'll be in the book of Acts. Sister Michelle, sorry about that as usual. Chapter 1, verse 9. In the book of Acts. You get in the book of Acts and it makes people nervous. Amen. You get to preaching on the Holy Ghost and it makes them nervous. Might make them have to get up and move. Might make them have to say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I thank the Lord tonight that I'm saved. I don't know about you. I thank God I'm sanctified. I thank God I'm Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God tonight. Y'all going to help me preach? Oh, come on now. Y'all going to help me preach? We come to have church, didn't we? Hey, I'm telling you, I'm going to preach. There ain't no better place to fall over and leave here than in the pulpit. Amen? Hey, Amen. I have felt better, but I'm quite sure I'll feel just fine here in just a couple of minutes. Amen. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says this, And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. My, my. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You say, Brother Mike, you preach on the rapture and Jesus all the time of the cross. That's the gospel, church. Uh, that is the gospel, is Jesus Christ. Amen? Preaching Jesus Christ is the gospel. There's no greater thing that we could preach, amen, than the gospel or the cross. The Jesus Christ or the cross is the greatest thing we could preach and live. Amen? So we find Jesus and the apostles on the Mount of Olives. Amen? And he's instructing them in this last moment. The, uh, the resurrection has taken place. He's come back 40 days. It was 40 days between the re resurrection and the ascension. Amen? So 40 days he spends. Amen? And he is giving them instructions on what's going to happen, giving them instructions on things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Amen? As he gives us instructions, we've got the Bible. It instructs us exactly as he instructed them. He also instructed them in Matthew 28 and 19. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's instructions that we've been given is to go out, uh, amen, and live and preach and teach the gospel. But the main focus is here today is what they said. Those two men bore witness. We had a witness, two witnesses from heaven that guaranteed that Jesus Christ was coming again. Oh, come on now. Y'all can do better than that. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the coming of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 20, 30 years ago, that's as far as I would have gotten this message. Brother Mike, amen, they'd have been tearing the pews up out of the floor and swinging from the lights because they was excited about the coming of the Lord. Amen. And that's what we need. We need to be excited about the coming of the Lord. I think we have lost the focus. People have lost focus of the coming of the Lord because of the day and the hour we live in. There's so much pressure. We're living the fast life. Amen. We don't have time 
amen, to sit down and read and pray and things like we used to have because we're in such a fast-paced life. And that's where he didn't want them to be. He wanted them to be instructed that, hey, you are going to have to carry the message that I have that I have started. You will continue that gospel and that message. Amen. So we find them and he's instructing them, amen, on the, on the, uh, the, the kingdom of God. And verse 4 says this, it said in verse 4, he said, Wait, wait for the promise of the Father. Wait is the main thing that we have trouble with is waiting on God. Now I'm very impatient, amen, when it comes to something I want, I wanted it yesterday. Amen, if it don't take food off the table or turn the lights off, I'm going to get it. Amen, as long as it don't take anything away and I feel like life's short. Amen, that's the way I look at it. But that's what he was saying was wait, wait upon God. We have, uh, we have the power, we have been given the staying power, amen, to wait upon God and to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, so many in this day and hour has lost their focus on the coming of the Lord and has lost their focus on what we are supposed to be doing. Oh, stay with me. We're going to get there in a few minutes. Five, t- listen to this, verse 5, he said this, Amen, for John truly baptized, Amen, with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Do you hear what he said? Amen, listen to this in verse 8. He said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. What an instruction from God. A lot of people say, well, I just can't do it. Amen, I can't witness, I can't teach, I can't preach. Oh yes, you can. Amen, if you let the Holy Ghost manifest Himself through you. If we try to do it within us, we'll fail God. Amen, we'll fail seriously. But if we'll let the Holy Ghost teach through us and manifest through us, amen, then we'll have that stay in power. I'm talking about the Lord is coming. We're going to get there. The Lord is coming, church. The Lord is coming. Amen. I can't say it enough. I can't stress it enough. We lose sight of that. Do we not? Has the church not lost sight of that? It has. We're living in a day and an hour when this world has lost sight of God. This world don't have time for God. It don't have time for anything to do with God. Amen. Chapter, uh, listen to this, uh, verse 9 says this also. Amen. He, amen, when he was taken up in a cloud, and a cloud received him out of their sight. What was that cloud? Amen. That cloud was the Shekinah glory of God. That cloud was the Shekinah glory of God. Now they're standing They're amazed. He's done told them that he would be taken away. Amen. He had done been crucified. He had done been buried. He had done been risen. Amen. And here he is again standing before them again. And now he's leaving again. Amen. And then then, then, you know they don't understand. They don't understand what's going on. Amen. So they said, those two men said, you men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? Amen. Up into the sky. Amen. Because you have been told why are we so puzzled about what God does? Why are we surprised about what God does? We shouldn't be. Amen. Because He has done told us exactly what He is going to do. Amen. And He's coming again. Hallelujah. Now a lot of people believe in pre-trib. I do. Amen. I know most of all of you do. Some believe in mid-trib. Some believe, amen, hallelujah, in post-trib. Amen. But I, I believe that He's coming and it's not been appointed unto us to go through that tribulation. Amen that we're going to leave here amen on that cloud he's going to call us out of here these two men in verse 10 was a confirmation from heaven that he will come again amen nothing is going to stop him there's nothing we can do to stop the coming of the Lord there's not one thing that this world can do 
to stop the coming of the Lord. The world can keep turning and it can keep moving on. Amen. When we pass on and we're gone, life is going to carry on. It's going to carry on until He comes again. Now don't get this mixed up. This is not, the, I'm not talking about the second coming of the Lord. I'm talking about the rapture. Amen. That's what He was talking about was the rapture of the Lord. And that's when that He steps out on the clouds in Thessalonians and calls the saints home. Now the second coming of the Lord will be when he comes to serve judgment and uh, you know what it is he was right on the Mount of Olives teaching the apostles and when he comes again he's coming back in the same place that he left on the Mount of Olives amen it says when, when he steps a foot on there it's going to split it in half hallelujah Glory to God. Amen. I'm telling you, God's good. The world cannot stop Him. 2 Timothy 3, 4, 5 said, listen to this, that in this last days men will become more lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Are we not there? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Are we not there? Amen. Are we not? Go out on the streets. I've said it many times, and it's so true. Everybody you talk to is saved. I'm telling you, brother, everybody that's sitting on a church pew is not saved. Amen. Everybody walking the streets is not saved. Everybody that, that proclaims God is not saved. Amen. You'll know the saved. He said you'll know them. Amen. My people will know you because you love the brethren. People will know that you are sons of God. People will know you by the fruit you bear. Amen. Let me tell you something. When you're saved, it doesn't matter. This world can roll on. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if they come to the house of God. It doesn't matter if they uh, become lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. It's not going to stop him. He's coming again, my friend. It's not going to change God's mind. It's not going to change God's ways. It's not going to change one thing about God. God, he's going to come again. Amen. The Lord is coming whether we like it or not. We can't stop it. There's nothing we can do about it. He's coming again. I'm starting to feel a little bit better now. Hallelujah. If my head don't pop off, I'll be all right. <laughs> hey, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof I'm talking about the end days I'm talking about uh, Timothy was talking about what would be going on in the last days amen when the Lord is coming again and it is one of the signs amen are men not uh, this day and hour more have a more of a form of godliness than the power of God amen amen I preached that message on the cross, bearing your cross, I don't know, a couple of years ago in here, something like that. Amen. He said, if you're going to have any part of me, you take up your cross. Amen. And I preached that message. Amen. I'm telling you, God was a feet in my soul. And he brought it right across to the right across and brought it just as plain as day. Amen. They pull up out here in the parking lot. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about the coming of the Lord now. He's a coming. Amen. And they'll take that cross out of the trunk. Amen. They'll carry it in the church. They got a form of godliness. Looking good. Looking sweet. Got a tie on. Amen. Wife's got a new dress all looking good amen but they fought all the way down the road come on now it don't matter what goes on you may leave out of this church and put that cross back in that trunk and be the same as you was when you leave here amen but I'm here to tell you it ain't going to stop the coming of the Lord he's the coming whether we walk upright or not it ain't going to stop him amen come on 2 Peter 3 and 4 says where is the promise of His coming? They preached it. And we preach it. And we testify it. And we tell them about it in our day and time. And they'll say the same thing. I've heard that all my life. I've heard that all my life. Hey, me and daddy, I've heard that all my life. Man, I've heard that all my life. I told you I seen a man down in, uh, uh, was down at uh, 
Walmart in York and a lady was out down there giving out tracts in the parking lot. Amen. And she walked over there and gave him a tract and he looked at it and he realized what it was and he just shook his head and wadded it up and throwed it down. Like, what am I even looking at this for? And I thought, man, when you stand in hell, you're going to remember when you wadded that track up. It's going to haunt you. It's going to haunt you. It's going to haunt you for eternity. You're going to remember throwing that track down. You're going to remember rejecting God. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, saints, it doesn't matter what this world does. They can reject God all they want, but they're not going to stop God from coming again. Amen. They're not going to stop Him from coming again he's going to come no matter what amen it's in the Bible we just read it he's coming again amen they said where is this promise amen where is this promise Lord have mercy in Revelations chapter 22 let me tell you something three times I can tell them where it is three times it's in the book of Revelations, chapter seven, or verse 7. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Go ahead, world. Turn yourself upside down. It doesn't make a difference. Amen. Live like hell. Live like there's not going to be a tomorrow. That's okay. He said, Behold, I come quickly. And in verse 12, he said, Behold, I come quickly. My goodness. In verse 20, he said, Surely, surely, I come quickly. Amen. I'm telling you, he's coming again, and there ain't nobody going to stop him. Amen. I'm telling you he's going to come again <laughs> abortion is not going to stop him do you know that 18% just a few things here to throw out there 18% of pregnancies end in abortion the world's not going to stop him from coming he's coming he's coming with vengeance amen He's going to call his church out of here. Then he's going to come with vengeance. 630,000 abortions reported to the CDC as of 2021. 630,000 babies murdered, killed. Murder is not going to stop the coming of the Lord, saints. I'm telling you, when it looks gloom and what is it? Loom and gloom and loom, whatever it is. And if you watch the news, that's okay. I, I just, you know, I, I've got what I don't even watch the weather. I can tell the weather, but weather, but I can hit it better than they can, brother. Amen. I can look outside and see if it's going to rain or not, or if the sun's going to shine, or if it's going to snow. But I do watch the weather. I don't watch. I, I just. I, I don't like watching that news no more, man. It's all COVID, COVID, COVID. It's a fear. Amen, it's the fear. It's real. I had it. Almost killed me. Amen, about took me out of here. Should have took me out of here. But it didn't. Thank God it didn't. Because I wasn't ready to go yet. Amen. But I'm telling you, when it looks bad, when you look at the news and you look at TV, amen, and you look at the things going on in this world, I'm telling you, it looks bad. It looks like there's not going to be a tomorrow. It looks like we have no hope. But I'm telling you, saints of God, we have a hope tonight. We have a hope tonight. And that's the coming of the Lord. He is coming again. Amen. We've got a hope in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh God, the government. Hey, I'm telling you, the government, God is not going to uh, uh, not come back because of them. They will not stop Him. The government will not stop Him. Controlling the country will not stop Him. Controlling the people will not stop Him. Uncle Joe's not going to stop Him. Uncle Joe can claim that he saved all he wants and Campbell. Harris or whatever her name is. I can't even say her name. Amen. And all the rest of those in there. Hypocrites in there that are trying to destroy the world. Not just this country. They're destroying the world, man. And they're the ringleaders of it. I'm telling you, man. I still believe to this day that in Revelations, the United States of America is that Babylon. Amen. I believe.
believe she's the one that's going to fall. Hallelujah. Oh, great God, I'm starting to feel the Holy Ghost now. I'm telling you, Uncle Joe can't stop it. Nobody's going to stop it. He's coming whether they like it or not. Amen. I don't care how many nuclear bombs and missiles that North Korea builds and all the other countries. Hey, Russia can put every everything they got on the borders of Ukraine. They can hire every country they want. But I'm telling you, it ain't going to stop God from coming again. He's going to blow through it like it ain't nothing, man. Because they don't have power over God. Nothing has power over God. He's coming again. Oh, man, that excites me that my God is coming again. Amen. That excites me. I am so glad. Amen. That I have a hope. Amen. I have a hope. You have a hope. And my Lord is coming. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what they do. Wars. Rumors of wars. It's a part of the last days. Read Matthew chapter 24 I guess it is. Amen. Read it. It's going to be there. We're there. We're past it. We're beyond it. Amen. I'm telling you, they're not going to stop him. They're not going to stop God from coming again. I'm telling you, the Lord is coming, church. The Lord is coming. You see, all them people stayed home night because they thought I was going to preach them in the hell. <laughs> now they're missing on the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sodom and Gomorrah thought they could get by with their sins. Amen. They thought that they had it made. But I want you to know that God made them pay the price. They paid a price for their sin. You see, the world's going to pay a price for its rejection of God. It's going to pay a price for its rejection of Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm here to tell you, sodomy is so bad today. Hey, I believe it's, it's probably worse than Sodom and Gomorrah was. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They can holler and bend, tote them signs all they want. Amen. Let him come. We'll crucify him again. Oh, no, you won't. He ain't coming on no donkey this time, Sister Doris. He ain't coming on no mule. He ain't coming as no lowly uh, Savior. He's coming in on a white horse and he's coming in the clouds. Thank God Almighty, they ain't going to crucify him again. Never again will he be crucified because he is now the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Great God, I wish I would say amen or something. I wish somebody would understand what I was saying. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Jesus. The King of King, The Lord of Lords. Our Savior. I'm talking about He's coming again church. Great God. Hallelujah. Hey, I seen that thing on the social media. They was holding that sign up, said, let him come again, let him come. We'll crucify him again. I thought, you idiot, you don't know what you're saying, man. You're going to pay a price for that. You're going to carry that, that sign in hell. Oh, great God. You're going to carry that sign in hell, and you're going to post it in hell, and it's going to haunt you for the rest of eternity because, my Lord God, you're not going to stop him from coming. Hallelujah. 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 The world is totally out of control. Totally out of control. But the thing that scares me the most is the church. Hallelujah. Where is the church? They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Amen. Nobody wants Holy Ghost filled services like we have around here on Sunday mornings. Amen. And Sunday nights. They don't want that no more. Amen. Amen. You know why they don't want that no more? It's because it'll reveal their ungodliness. Amen. And it'll reveal where they're living at. And they'll find out that they're not as saved as they think they are. Amen. Amen. They're not ready to face God. Hey, listen to me, church. Listen to me. I'm just so worried about where the church stands. Second Timothy. Listen to this. Let me flip over there real quick. Amen. Help me preach, uh, baby. Help me preach. Say amen, brother Mike. Let them holler. Let them holler all they want. Glory to God. Help me preach. Boy, mine used to. We had a brother Hackney. He was an older gentleman, sat on the front front pew. Brother service wouldn't let me start his name. Woo! Woo! He do it the whole time. Never stop. He's in his 80s. 
kids would be in the house, and I'd tell them, y'all don't do that. They'd be going, woo woo playing church, shouting like Brother Hackney. I said, y'all don't do that, please. <laughs> I said, Sister Hackney, is he like that all the time? She said, he don't quit. When his feet hit the floor, he's a bouncer. When we go in the grocery stores, he's a, everybody knowed who Robert Hackney was. Amen. When they seen that old man coming, if they had something wrong, they'd say, hey, Brother Hackney, come and lay your hands on me. Amen. I need a move of God in my life. I need a healing in my life. You know what he always said? He said, I'm waiting on God, and I can't wait if it's my rapture or my grave. I want to see my God. Amen. There was a man that knew who his God was and was saved from him the tone somebody say amen 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 oh I was headed for 2nd Timothy y'all done got me all messed up here I don't even know where I'm at hallelujah 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 I think that's where we want to go if it ain't we'll go there anyway amen amen nope that's not where we want to go hallelujah so let's move on Revelations 3 and 7. I know we can get there. Revelations chapter 3 verse 7. Glory to God. I want to read to you. Listen to this. He was talking to the churches. Amen. Issuing to them. Had John to write a letter to them. But it's that one little church in verse 7. Amen. That caught my eye and catches the eye of all the saints. It's that church of Philadelphia. Amen. Listen to what he said. You know Philadelphia was not a big church. It was tucked away in the side of a mountain. It wasn't a big church. He said, we're two or three are gathered in my name. I've said it a million times, and I'll say it till he comes. Give me 30 saints of God instead of 3,000 hypocrites and players that play church and want to bring their money and throw it in the offering plate. Amen. A little bit of tithes every now and again or whatever. Amen. To make their ease their conscience. But I'm here to tell you this morning, give me a people that love God. Give me a people that worship God. Give me a people that are looking for God. He said unto those that are looking, will I appear a second time? If you're not looking, you might miss Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Those five foolish virgins, they missed out, man. They weren't looking hey they had done went to sleep and they slept right through it when when the uh, when the groom came and they announced and said the groom is here those five wives was ready and they went to the marriage amen and the five foolish went out looking for oil and they came back and they went to them knocked on the door and said let us in and he said oh no sir put it in layman terms no you're not getting in amen I don't know you amen you should have been ready Ready from the get go. Listen to this. He said to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Right. I'm almost done y'all. These things saith he that is holy. He that is true. He that hath the key of David. He that openeth and no man shutteth. He and shutteth and no man openeth. Listen to this. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. My goodness, my goodness. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Glory to God, man. Glory to God. I, I, do y'all hear what, I, what he's saying? Verse 10, he says this. He said, because thou hast kept the word. Here you go. Now listen to me closely. I'm pre-trip. Here you go. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Talking to the church. I also will keep thee from that hour of temptation which shall come upon the, all the world. He didn't say which is going to come upon you. 
That temptation of all the world is what? Come on. That's right, brother. That's the tribulation. I'll keep you from that hour of tribulation. I will not because you have. Oh, if you want to go through it, go ahead. I'll be waiting on you on the other side. I'll help. I'll welcome you in. Glory to God. I say, come on. You really didn't have to suffer that. Hallelujah. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Listen to me. He was talking to that little church of Philadelphia. They were small, small in numbers. I want you to know the night. Amen for the records. And I'm about through. I'm so glad and I don't care what they say. Amen. The devil and the hypocrites can say what they want about Zion and about any other church that preaches the gospel. You see, they don't want the gospel no more. They don't want the truth no more. Soothe my soul. Amen. Tickle my ears. Let me know that I'm going to glory. Amen. Let me know that everything's all right. If you don't know everything's all right with yourself, then you, amen, and nobody else can tell you you've lost it anyway. Amen. You never got it. Listen, I'm so glad that little church of Philadelphia, I'm so glad that down in Gastonia, North Carolina, are y'all hearing me? Y'all hearing me? Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all calm down a little bit now. Hallelujah. Y'all getting wild in here. Hey, I'm so glad down in Gastonia, in North Carolina tucked away on the side glory to God of 2337 Pope Street there's a little church that's a little country church I guess you would say that's few in numbers but I want you to know they, they, they are strong in the power of faith they're strong in prayer they know who God is and they ring the, the prayer bells of heaven I'm so glad I know that little church. I'm so glad that they are looking for the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We may be small in number. I'm talking about Zion right here. I can't talk about nobody. I don't know the other churches. Amen. Hey, I'm talking about Zion. We may be small in number, but we're big in faith. Come on now. Hallelujah. Come on now. We may have little uh, 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 or have many faults or some faults or whatever, but we're big in love. Come on. Amen. I know that we're not perfect. There's nobody perfect. But I guarantee you if some one of them walk, one of you walked out that door and somebody was out there waiting on you, everybody in the church would be on them like an old pack of dogs. Amen. Saying, get off of my brother and get off of my sister. Amen. You see, they may not know us. The world may not know us. That's all right. He may not know who Zion Baptist Church is. He may not, never know who Mike White is. That's okay. Amen. That's all right. They may not know us, but God knows us. And that's all that matters to me is my God knows who Mike White is. My God knows who Zion Baptist Church is. And he said, because thou hast kept the faith, thou hast kept the patience, thou hast tri uh, preached the truth, he will keep us from that and he will He'll come again. You see, it don't matter if the world knows us. I could care less about that because I don't know the world and don't want to know them. But I want you to know tonight, heaven has heard us pray. Amen, Sister Linda. Heaven has heard old Linda pray. Heaven has heard old Mike White pray. Heaven has heard those singers sing the glory of God. He has, they have heard it. I'm telling you, heaven knows who we are. The angels know who we are. They have heard us worship. They have heard us lift up God. God. They have heard us do everything that we can to glorify God. Hey, the world might not know us. Amen. But that ain't going to stop God and it ain't going to stop Zion. We're going to keep on rolling, brother. The Lord is coming. He's coming, church. He's coming. He's coming after a people that are looking and watching. The Lord is coming. If that don't encourage you, I don't know what will. Amen, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Amen, there's nothing else I can say. I'm done. Amen, I'm done. But I'm so glad tonight that heaven knows who I am. 
I'm so glad tonight that when I hit my knees, amen, hell begins to tremble. Because it says, man, he's fixing to get to praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank God. And I'm telling you, he's going to ring the prayer bells of heaven. And he says the same thing about you. Amen. When he says, when old okay, Cheryl gets down and hits her knees, I know she's fixing to get to praying in the Holy Ghost. And man, it makes me nervous. I think I'll escape right out of here and I'll be back when she gets done. But while are they praying, while are they shouting, while are they singing, while are they preaching, while are they teaching, I think I'll break camp because the Lord is coming. You see, Satan knows. He knows Scripture. He can quote Scripture. He knows it all. He knows his destination. He knows that he's doomed for hell. Amen. And he knows that we're getting ready to leave here. I don't believe it's going to be long, church. I really don't. I really don't. I don't believe it'll be long. But you know what? The thing that fears me the most, hallelujah. And I love preaching on the coming of the Lord and everything else. Uh, amen. But what fears me, uh, scares me the most uh, is now we're living in a day and an hour when the church is not looking for Him. Amen. The same folks that are here on Sunday morning should be here on Sunday night. The same folks that are here on Sunday morning should be here on Wednesday night. You know what? That's all right. That don't bother me. They got to answer to God. I don't. It ain't going to stop him from coming. If they don't ever walk through those doors again, it ain't going to stop him from coming. He's a coming anyway. And he's coming for me and you. Amen. Hallelujah.